What's up guys, we're at Putnam Park on this beautiful, what is it, Tuesday? We're gonna go check out a car in one of the group garages here at Putnam Park, something that we worked on. This car is really special to us because it was one of our earlier big downforce aero projects. All right, guys, so we have a 2010 Dodge Viper ACRX, one of 50. And this is basically a car that we kind of took under our wing a few years ago and did a full build on it. So we scanned the car, we did the aero development, we built the aero parts, we installed the aero parts. We actually did the entire interior as well. I did the brakes. There's some really neat features of this car, uh, but overall it's, it's you know, your run-of-the-mill high downforce setup from Barris. So we have a fairly large front splitter. Chris was really adamant about not having that splitter stick out far forward. So to make that rear down or the front downforce that we needed, we kind of got uh, we kind of had to do some things that we don't normally do. So we did some spill plates on the front. This increases some high pressure on the top of the splitter. And then what most people do see is that fender vent. The fender vent was introduced to really alleviate the fender of high pressure air. And what happened was as we were developing it, the larger the fender vent got, the more downforce it made. So when Paul was designing it, and as we were trying to develop it at around a 50-50 aero balance, we just made that fender vent bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. As the fender vent got bigger, we made more front downforce, that improved the splitter's efficiency, and we had a, a, a basically an aero package. So on the end of the uh, splitter, we have some polyweave end plates. These are great for basically attacking curbs and hitting the ground and not getting destroyed. So this is kind of a protective as well as an aerodynamic function. We have this integrated air dam, which we had to do because the factory unit is very similar to this. So we had to kind of incorporate this, which is kind of new for us, was new for us four years ago. Splitter ties are professional awesome with some of our clevises but that is to allow the downforce to actually translate to the chassis. We did use the factory mounting and we found that this was a little bit weak because we take out a lot of strength when we add uh, those three diffusers or splitter tunnels on the bottom side. We have a 3D printed brake duct, so this actually goes to a four inch brake duct hose that goes to the factory unit. And these reuse the factory location for the splitter ties from the factory. And then, like I said, on the bottom, we have a large uh, tunnel in the center and we go to factory mounting points on the bottom side. Fender vents are two by two 12 carbon, uh, similar to the front splitter. These were basically transposed onto the factory fender. We used scan data and all that type of stuff to, to basically make it an OEM fit and finish. We actually have some block off plates that will block this off in different varying fashions to change the front downforce. Something Chris really wanted us to do was have the ability to change rear and front downforce. So with the front splitter, we have diffuser block offs and we have fender vent block offs. And there's a very variety of ways that we can change downforce levels as well as drag levels as a result. So that's another cool kit function of what we did with this that we haven't done in the past. Uh, we did this stainless steel sheet metal as well as gold foil because we knew that the exhaust obviously gets hot. This is a plastic in nature, so we wanted to block that. It seems like everything's been fine, so there's no worry there, but that's just our run-of-the-mill carbon poly weave at the end of the day. All right, so down here, we have some diffuser strakes that we added to the factory rear diffuser. The factory unit had smaller ones. We just increased them in size and that improved some downforce. We also have some underbody panels forward facing of that, which really helped that tire squish and that coming off of the tire, which improved diffuser function as well. So we did those two things combined to improve the efficiency of the vehicle. Last but not least, we have our V2X rear wing element with some custom end plates that we ended up routing out. 
Chris wanted this for aesthetics, but what actually produces downpours are the two elements, which run of the mill. Uh, this is one of the first, I believe, bottom mount V2Xs. So we had to do a custom mounting style and uh, some internal ribbing differently than, than typical, but that was to basically make this rear wing bolt-on like factory. And while the load is transferred to the trunk, it's actually transferred through the trunk to the chassis. So on the inside, we actually have a solid mount which goes to the chassis and when the trunk is closed, it actually transfers that load directly to the chassis as a result. So it's like an OEM fit and finish, but with that load transferring of direct to the chassis, because this, this makes a lot of downforce and we didn't want to break this fiberglass rear deck lid as a result. We recommend that all V2Xs are chassis mounted. Honestly, V1X is even worrisome to us, which is why we tested the Super the way we did. But downforce really does, it's, it's, it's a, it'll destroy some stuff. So we wanted to make sure that this was safe. And that's why we basically did that chassis mounting and a little bit of welding on the inside.